dealing with heartbreak. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Relationship Thursday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author, podcaster, and your uplifting life partner. Now, this topic I felt was very important to put out because I actually have a family member that I'm helping through this particular situation right now. I'm seeing it popping up everywhere. So I figured this is a great time to actually put this out here. Now, I remember back, uh, I mean, this was young though. Um, in my younger days, I had a, a girlfriend that I had a very, very strong crush on. And um, I thought we were, I mean, cause all the guys just loved her. They were, I remember uh, in class, these guys were talking, you know, some of my friends were sitting there talking and they're talking about this new girl in the school and that she was fine and she was this and that. And, and I'm like, who are you guys talking about? And they told me her name. Yeah, I still know her name to this day. <laughs> I'm not going to say that in case she sees the video. But anyway, <laughs> but uh, I doubt if she would. But anyway, um, and I was feeling proud because I was like, man, that's my girlfriend. And they're like, you lying. They're like, you don't even know who she is. I said, well, stay here after class. You'll see because uh, she's coming here after, after to meet me at my class. And she comes up. And their mouths just dropped. They were like, he wasn't kidding. And so needless to say, I'm walking around feeling like the man. And so the whole time we're dating, you know, I'm on top of the world. Like I got the girl in the school, you know, the guys are looking at it. And needless to say, she lived around the corner from me. And someone told me that she was actually messing around in a relationship with one of my friends. At least I thought he was a friend. And that was crushing because my whole image that I had created, you know, that I'm the man, <laughs> was all surrounded this particular young lady. And to hear that was crushing, you know. And I got through it, as you guys could tell. But then also I remember even something uh, even happened in college one time. A young lady I was dating, kind of the same thing, had like a little crush on her and everything was beautiful and came to her room, to her dorm to surprise her. And needless to say, I got surprised because uh, her door was cracked, you know, open, her dorm room. And there's some guy in there, they're wrestling around, they're playing and you know, all that kind of stuff. And so needless to say, again, I'm crushed because I'm like, this is my girlfriend playing around with some other guy like ee, 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 you know and um again as you see i made it through i'm just glad i didn't catch them actually doing anything else from the physical perspective uh might have been really crushing but for those of you who do know my story you know that in my dream that is what actually uh made me actually commit to my wife and quit trying to be the man uh, cause I actually had what I called the nightmare cause I did have a dream that I actually caught her cheating and, uh, that, whoo, you talking about now that was some heartbreak, heart sweat, uh, <laughs> whatever you want to come up with. I felt it all needless to say, like I said, it changed me from wanting to think I was the man or wanting to be the man to I was committed. But the ultimate heartbreak was actually, again, if you know my story, you know that I lost my wife, uh, it's going on seven years now. Um, I lost her to cancer, someone I had been with for 32 years. And so that's why some of the examples I used before that were younger because I was with her for 32 years. So that's pretty much the only ways I can reflect back is we, we got to go back some time to, to get there. But anyway, um, and that to me was, was kind of the ultimate uh, heartbreak because here it is, the person I planned to spend the rest of my life with, thought I was going to be, we we're going to be that 100-year-old couple. Um on the swings together, walking through the parks, you know, doing, you know, kind of that, but there were different plans. So I know the heartbreak that most of you are thinking about and which I am going to cover happens to do with relationship heartbreak. And the reason I use the example of my wife is because there's been research that shows that when people go through heartbreak, they actually have the same uh, physical reaction as someone who's addicted to cocaine or to alcohol, it's that same kind of uh, withdrawal, or, or uh, we should say, um, what is it that that we all find something that we can we can grab onto to help us 
get through things and that's their way of coping with it is alcohol or, or uh, drugs. And so the pain, bottom line, is the same uh, feeling. And so to me, I feel like the losing of my partner would, would kind of be in that same kind of uh, arena. And I know for those of you who are going through heartbreak, it's even more painful in terms of it's something that, in my case, I know there's nothing I can do. I can't bring her back. I, I can cry. I can pray. I can do whatever. She's not coming back. But when you have someone that's physically around and you didn't necessarily want the breakup, you have this thought process of maybe I can get them back. And so I, I so that's, again, why I want to address this. Um, but here's the key. If you guys did break up, you needed it to happen. Now, I know for some of you, you go, what you mean? I didn't need us to break up. E yes, you did. I hear all the time people are saying, well, I want to get us back to where we used to be. And I said, no, you don't. Because where you used to be got you to where you were, which is why you guys are not together anymore. The whole objective and why I said you needed this to happen is because there's obviously something where you guys weren't going to make it. And it's better now than later. Could you imagine this happening five years from now, 10 years from now? If you guys don't have kids, you end up with kids, or you get married and you have kids, or just get married and these issues come up and you, and you, you break up then. It's like, that's not the time you want to figure this stuff out. So the sooner, the better. And that's why I'm saying you needed this to happen because obviously there's an issue that needs, or issues that need to be addressed. So let me talk about this. What you need to do is, first off, don't fight your feelings. They are what they are. Uh, I talk about all the time, if you need to cry, you need to scream, you need to roll on the floor, you need to punch a pillow, whatever it is that you need to do, you need to do. You need to let that out. That's called being a human being. This is not about, and this includes you guys also, men, if you want to, because some people get so stuck on words. Some people, if I say guys, I go, oh, I'm not a guy, I'm a man. Okay. <laughs> Men, if you need to do the same thing, do it. Roll on the floor, scream out. I don't care what the world keeps trying to tell you. I know no matter who you are, no matter what macho role you're playing, you have cried and you're going to cry. Un unfortunately, the world has taught you you can't, you have to do it behind closed doors. And if you feel you have to do it, do it. Um, I personally think it is what it is. If I need to cry in front of you, I cry. If it, it offends you, then you need to deal with it because it's okay with me. <laughs> but anyway, um, but, but understand, you're upset. You're angry. You got some grief going on, especially if you're not the person that, that, that um, decided to make this a reality. Make sure whatever you do during this time that you don't start lashing out at others because of the fact is what you're dealing with. And the reason I say that is because now you'll actually make it worse on yourself because now you start to destroy other relationships that didn't have problems that you're starting to now create friction in those because of the fact is you're not knowing how to deal with your current one. Uh, matter of fact, you know, my family member helping them get through this because it was starting to affect the way they performed at work. And see, that's, that's where I'm saying the lashing out. And in his case, he wasn't lashing out, but he checked out while you're at work. You can't check out at work. You know what I mean? It's like, because that's starting to affect you getting your job done, which means you might not have a job because, again, we don't know how long this is going to take. Now, you can explain to the boss or whoever it is that, this is uh, what's going on, and they may they may be okay with it for a week, a couple of weeks, or whatever. But you draw it out too long, and you ain't gonna have a job. And if you're the person that is in charge, uh, that makes it real tough because you're checking out, and you're the person that's calling the shots. Not a good scenario. You may again be without a job. So the key is to recognize that you do have this, address it. And again, this is not about being fake or phony at work. You know, that's why I said this, none of this is about it, but it is getting it, it's dealing with it and getting it resolved. You do need to learn how to shut it down. But that's, again, some of the stuff that we'll talk about. If you go through this stuff, you'll be able to make it through the day without being phony, 
but without affecting your uh, performance at the same time. Okay, but you need this time to heal. You need to uh, have forgiveness for yourself, forgiveness for the other person. I mean, whether it was something you did wrong or you feel you did wrong or they did something wrong, you have to have forgiveness. And as you, you've heard many times before, forgiveness is not for them. Forgiveness is for you so that you can move forward. And so you have to go through this process um, this this painful process, which I know for a lot of you that is what it is, in order to get that, I mean, to get through there. And so be willing to talk it out. Um, you could talk it out with those, and that's why I was going to say make sure you surround yourself with uh, those that are supportive and those that can help you. Uh, people that will make it gossip or people that are actually just going to take your side and, yeah, he ain't no good. Folks, that's, that's not what you need at this time. You don't need people to, to sit there and... Um, and just cheer you on because that's not going to solve the real issues. It's nice, and you do want the support of people around you, but you need support in the sense that's going to create progress and move you forward. And some of that is uh, gut checking that you might have to be willing to take um, in order to do that. You know, like with my family member, I shared some things, and 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 I had let him know I'm not going to give you. Uh, a pass and, and make this other person a villain. But at the same time, I'm not going to make you a villain. You see, you guys get me? This is, this is about being able to go through, to have some reflective thinking. What roles did you play in the relationship? What caused some of the friction that you've created? What are some of the things that they created? And the whole idea is this is not to blame. This is not to say right or wrong. It's none of that. It's so that you can, um, as we talk about, learn from it because it's either, and, and I truly believe in this, is you either learn or, you, or, you, or you're, uh, um, you're growing, one of the two. Because anything that doesn't work out the way you think it should, if you take the, the uh, lessons that's in it, then you can learn and progress. And that's what we're talking about here through this uh, heartbreak time is learning all the things that are involved and, um, and progressing for it. So make sure you stand by your decision. And the reason I say stand by your decision is because, again, there's a reason that you guys decided to break up, even if it was their, them making a decision. There's a reason that it happened. What you don't want to do is step instantly back into that without some... Um, getting some issues resolved, whatever it is that's creating, because if not, you guys are going to break up again. And I see it all the time that people will get back together. They, yeah, we're back together. Then they break up. Then they back together. Then they break up. And I'm just like, and the reason it will continue to happen until they finally say I'm done is because they didn't take a stand on the decision and work through it. I'm not saying take a stance in, in the sense that we're done and I'll never deal with you again. And now some people do believe in that philosophy, so whatever works for you. But I'm just saying, for me, I'm saying stand by your decisions because you're saying there is some reasons that we broke up. There are some, some challenges. And we need to stand by the decision to separate and figure out those issues so that if we do come back together, then it will hopefully last because we're, we're definitely not going to be disputing over the stuff that we didn't get resolved that were the reasons for the first time. You guys follow me? We're going to get those taken care of. Okay. But again, this is reflective thinking time for you to go back and, and again, think of the things that you did, how you contributed, what's your role. Um, again, and this is what I had to get the family member because they were taking on they basically were taking on all the blame and, and putting their partner on a pedestal. And I'm like, get them down. They don't belong on the pedestal. Um, this is not about uh, making, again, making yourself a villain. This is about taking responsibility for your parts, but understand they have parts also. Um, neutralize your blaming that who's right, who's wrong, that, that's not what this is about. And that's what I was sharing with him also, is this is not about trying to prove right or wrong. 
this is and this is not about him blaming himself and 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 uh making himself a bad person this is about being able to sit back and again as i said learn from what took place um we've already talked about surrounding yourself with uh supportive people and again i'm talking about people that can help you move forward not people that's going to get in there and gossip with you and make it worse when they go yeah and he he did this and I can't believe he did that and they're trying to destroy your partner again. That's not the point of what I'm talking. This is not about destroying the other person so that you feel better. That's not solving your issues, okay? Um, one of the things you're really gonna have to do is, is uh, if you are a person that's on social media, you're gonna have to get away from your social media, especially in any, any kind of media that your partner is on that means because all of a sudden and you could say we could we could use Facebook for example since that's pretty popular if your partner's on Facebook and people go well I'm just gonna block them you can and that's cool and that's kind of what I'm what I'm saying ditching the social media but here's the key think about this if you know they're on social media I mean on Facebook if you go on say uh, Facebook just because you have them blocked do you believe that means you're not going to think about them? You're not going to be wondering, well, I wonder what they're doing. I wonder if they're trying to contact me on Facebook. I want you guys follow me. So even if you block them, you still have the mental thought process of them by going on there. So what we're saying, and we're not saying get off, I'm not saying get off of social media forever. I'm saying until you get to a point where you are strong enough that it doesn't bother you to go on to Facebook to see this person. You know what I'm saying? When you get to that point, all the stuff that I'm talking about, you're good. But it, we're talking about the beginning stages, why you're dealing with the heartbreak. That's really the whole idea behind this, this particular video. We're talking about why you're dealing with the heartbreak. You have to basically lose contact with this person. Something even as, uh, as simple like if, if you guys live together for a while, you may have to move your furniture around. Pictures that were hanging on the walls, you're going to have to take down and put up new pictures. See, the whole idea, and I know people go, that's drastic. No, you have to create because the mind doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's not. And if you stay in the same environment, then your thought process is going to be the same. That's why you'll hear people talk about they had to stop going to the same restaurant because there was a certain restaurant them and their partner loved to go to. So they had to cut that restaurant out. Um, you had a certain movie theater. And folks, understand, this is temporary. This is not something you're doing forever. This is what you're doing through the healing process. I have to be able to get myself at peace so when I do see that person, it doesn't have the same effect on me. And you guys know I'm going to get to it. It's all about changing the stories. I mean, um, and that's what I was sharing with him is that you've written these wonderful stories about her and, 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 and again, almost put her in a position of almost like a God. And that's why I was telling him, I said, man, you got to pull her down. I mean, it's like you got her to like she could do no wrong and uh, welcome to the real world. And I'm like, um, because, again, he, he's tearing up himself in the process of building her up and that's again also what I was telling him I said think about it how can you not want to be with a person that you put on a pedestal if you have nothing but good things to say about that person and and, and again I'm not saying make up stuff and make up bad that's not my point but if all you're doing is making them again like they're on a pedestal how can you not or avoid wanting to be with a person who's this perfect person and the fact that they're not in your life, of course you would be miserable. You guys follow me? I mean, you can't help it. I mean, they're, it's like they are paradise. And they're somewhere close by and you were with paradise for a while. And um, they can't do anything but haunt you and make you feel bad and, and, and destroy yourself. And that's why, again, why I'm saying you have to break away from them aside from pulling them off of that pedestal. And then start filling your life with uh, some laughter. Get out and um, it's the same thing uh, when you deal with something like, because um, I remember telling my wife that when she was going through the cancer and I was telling her, 
we've heard the stories, we watched the stories where people were saying they laughed their way to being well. And by that, what I'm saying is they anything that had to do with negativity, they cut out. And this is where I'm saying fill your life with laughter. Uh, if you're going to watch shows, watch comedies. Don't sit there and watching romance um, movies and you're reading romantic books. And again, if your person loves romantic books, that's cool. Not right now, okay? <laughs> it's like, because again, you guys follow, I know you know where, what I'm talking about. If you're doing this stuff, you're doing nothing but keeping yourself in that, uh, that state which is not healthy for you. We're going to go back to the romantic books, the romantic movies, and going back to the movie theater we used to go to and the restaurants and, and all this. We're going to get back to that. This is the temporary until we change the stories, because you guys know that's everything, because your feelings come from your stories. When we get good at changing the stories to a point where we feel different about this person and the situation and we can bring those things in without us being a mental wreck. In other words, we better be very strong when, when we get back to that point. Then we can start bringing that back in. And at that point, if that person comes back into your life and because of the, the, the growth and both of you have been doing some changes and you guys get back together, cool. There's You've, it's happened many times, and you guys have heard the stories where people that broke up and got back together later and live happily ever after because they both had some growing to do. So that's kind of what I'm getting to. Is is there's And that's why I said stand by your decision, because obviously there was a reason that we broke up, and we need to get that resolved. Um, whatever you do, and this one's major. This is really major. Do not, whatever you do, Go get in another relationship. Don't do it. That's why, again, you hear people always talking about bringing baggage into another relationship. What do you think you're doing if you're going through heartbreak and you go to another relationship? I remember, and I, and I know I've shared this before, a gentleman that I was at an event, and he talked about the fact that his wife, who he went to high school, junior high, high school, they married, they were sweethearts. And he just thought everything was beautiful and found out she had an affair and she decided she was leaving to go with the other guy. And so they filed divorce and, you know, he gave her the, the you know, the power to do whatever she wants with everything. And he's thinking, of course, all the past that they've had that um, she's going to do the right thing. But he says she cleaned them out. She took everything. And it's like, and, and that's hard really to think about that someone that you thought you had this kind of would turn around like what he said and just totally just like try to destroy you. And it's like, but that's what she did. And so my thing is, and he said himself, he says, I have trust issues. That's my point. For him to get in a relationship right now with trust issues, it's not good for him. It's not good for the person that he gets in a relationship with because he's going to always, anything they do, He's going to question. That's going to create friction in a relationship. Things coming from, you know, um, out of the blue. And um, she's like, where did that come from? I've never done anything to make you think that way or whatever. But he's going to be bringing that old stuff in, that old baggage, into the new relationship. And guess what? Chances are pretty good that relationship is not going to last. So the bottom line is get you together first, which is the whole idea of why I, why I talk about Self-Love Monday. It's all about getting you together first and then bringing a partner in. You know, and that's why, you know, like people say you, you need to be evenly yoked. Um, folks, I tell people all the time, you're always evenly yoked. The people that you're with, even though it ain't working or you say they're the wrong person. No, they are. They're the right person for you right now. They're just a reflection of you and your thought process. And if you don't like what's showing up, it's time to do the stuff that I'm talking about. Work on you so that you can attract differently. Does that make sense? Okay. And then we want to talk about um, some of the ways I would recommend is throughout this process. If you could create a journal, 
Uh, and the reason for that is you get to express everything that you think. And don't sit there trying, especially those of you who are uh, structured and the I's have to be there and the T's have to be, I mean, the, the, the dot has to be over the I and the T has, T has to be crossed. Now, this is not that time. This is a time you just flowing. Whatever's on your mind, if you need to write the letter big, I hate you, which hopefully you ain't going there, but if you do, and it takes up the whole page, that's what you need to do because that's where you're at at that point. Um, I had a buddy that, that, that we befriended on Facebook and that's where he was. He was, and he was doing a journal at the time, but he was almost at a suicidal state. And I told him to continue to write the journal, but I told him, but write a book. And he was like, I, I can't, I'm, I'm still going through a healing process. And I said, yeah, but there's people that are where you were that needs to get where you are you can help them. And as you're going through the process and, and healing more, you'll be able to come back and give them more information. As they said, the whole idea to, to helping other people is I don't have to know everything. I just got to be a step ahead of the person or a chapter, as we say in the book. If you read the book, I just got to stay a chapter ahead of the people that I'm talking to. Does that make sense? So the key is you can help those that are just behind you as you're developing yourself. So anyway, so that's why I said, so the journal, uh, videotape it. I was uh, sharing with my family member, videotape it. If you don't want to sit there and, and write it, sit there and, 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 and do like what I'm doing now. Sit there and just turn on the videotape and just talk and cry and roll on the floor like we're talking about because now you don't want to sit there and take the time out on writing. Videotape it. This is not to depress you, this is to, so that it's a healing process so that you can see and you can get this stuff out of your system. And not only that, you could, I mean, even him, once he saw the video he did, he's like, whoa, man, look where I was at. Yeah, that's the purpose of this. And so, again, this is a lesson that you want to be able to, 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 to grab all the, uh, the experience from. And this is a great way. And then not only that, once you get through this, most important, you'll be able to turn around and give and help other people, contribute to other people's lives because of what you've gone through. So now when you start to talk to people, this is not a he say, she say conversation. This is from experience. I can tell you've been there, done that. And again, I'm not going to go through the, the story, but I told you guys when this COVID first came out for two days, I was just totally down and I couldn't really talk to people about uh, what's it like to be at a depressed state, but I got to experience it. And so now I'm like, it's a place you don't want to hang out at. And, and so I get it now and I can understand how it would lead to other things if I had gone beyond the two days. Um, but because I know the stuff that I know, I was able to snap myself out of it. And so that's the whole purpose of all this that we go through. Life is giving you lessons for you to learn from. Then you can turn around and contribute because that's where significance comes from and where you feel like your life is very valuable. The more you go out and you give to others, the more you feel like you, your, your life actually has value. So again, um, I'll close out with an exercise. You guys have heard me talk about this before, but this is a perfect time for you to put this exercise into play. And it's one I got from Lisa Nichols. Um, and it's one I said you could do it for 21 days because it takes 21 days to create a habit, or you could do it for 30 days, or you could do it for the rest of your life. But the bottom line is there's three statements that you make and you fill in the blanks with seven different endings. And so the first statement that you're going to say is, in my case, I would say, Ron, I am proud of you. And then we're going to talk about what I'm proud of you for with seven different endings. Um, you know, and then the second statement, and if and if, they, if it's a duplicate on the seven, don't, this is not about being technical and being perfect. This is about, let's get through that. And if you need it more than once, you may have to say the same ending for seven times in order to, for that repetition for it to sink into you because this may be a point that you really need to drive home. But the bottom line is to say, I am proud of, you know, Ron, I am proud of you for, and, and, and like I said, the seven innings. The second one is going to be, Ron, I forgive you for. And this is where you really get to go through the things that you brought to the relationship that you feel that you're, you're blaming yourself for. 
you're able to now look in the mirror and say, Ron, I forgive you for. I forgive you for not being for not listening. I forgive you for um, your anger issues. I forgive you for. Um, I don't have anger issues, but <laughs> I, I just want to give y'all an example. Uh, but the, the the key is, you guys follow me. That's the perfect time for this forgiveness. And then the third statement is going to be, I, Ron, I commit to. And then what do you commit to? You know what I'm saying? I commit to being, being more patient. I commit to listening more. And um, I commit to, you know... Um, being a great partner. I mean, whatever it is, but again, it's seven different indies. Do that every day. Like I said, for 21 days, do it for 30 days. You can do it for the rest of your life again. Work through that. Don't beat yourself up. This is not blaming time. This is not shaming time. This is not making you a bad person, making them a bad person. This is coming to a realization that we needed this to happen because obviously there's some areas that I need to grow I need to learn areas they need to grow, they need to learn. And when we get through that process, if we, and that's what I was sharing with him, when you go through the process, and if you guys end up connecting at the end, beautiful. But if you don't, then they weren't the right person. And what this did is helped you uh, take some time out and figure out what you really want. And that's a uh, part of that when we talked about writing a list. Oh, man, this is a perfect time to start writing a list <laughs> through this process. In your journal, start creating your list. You know, as you on a daily basis, you can be like, oh, there's another thing that I'm not going to put up with. Or I don't. And again, the purpose of the list, you guys have heard me say before, the reason for doing the list is so that you can look at yourself and make the adjustments. Because chances are very good. Most of the things that we're looking for in a partner are areas that we actually need to grow in ourselves. Um, I've heard it said, and I agree, the things that you dislike most in other people are usually your own problems, your own issues. Whew! And I know that's something we don't want to hear. But look at those things in your life and see. But anyway... So make sure you do the journaling, take the time, do the exercise. Um, again, this is a healing time. This is not a time to, to point the finger. This is not a time to try to figure out how I can get revenge. Um, all the different videos is telling you how to win them back, um, how to meet at a certain club that they're at, dress in a certain way. Basically trying to teach you how to manipulate, how to play games, how to harm someone. How to... Folks, you guys know I'm not into any of that. Like I told him, this is not about you getting back with her. This is all about you finding you and becoming the best you possible. That's all I'm concerned about is you being the best you possible. Present that person to the world. That's everything that I share all the time, whether it's self-love Monday or it's relationship there. This is all about getting you together so that you, after you love you, you can get that right partner and enjoy this thing we call life. And as you guys know, it ain't right. It ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, for those of you that we talk on Self Love Monday, I'll see you guys on Monday. And then for Relationship Thursday, I'll see you back here next Thursday. Run on over, over to uh, ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, that's ronsimplifiedmyers.online. That's where you can get uh, find out everything that I got going on. And as you guys know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. Take the time. Use this, uh, as you call, heartbreak. And understand that this is a valuable time for you to learn and expand you and truly love that person in the mirror and, 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 and honestly find the person, the right person for you. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.